What is going on, YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media, bringing you another episode of Pokemon X and Y Battle Spot Live. Today's episode is number 68, and coming into today's episode, we are sitting at a 26 game differential of 80 and 54. Finally, I got the record right. I messed it up a bunch of times in the last episode. Finally, got it straight now. Anyway, before we get into the new team that we're bringing today, because we're bringing a fresh team. Uh, before we do that, just would like to remind you guys of our like goal for this video, which is 70 likes. So if we can meet that, that would be absolutely fantastic. So do not forget to click that like button, that thumbs up button. It does help out a lot. Now, on to the team today. We have Focus Sash, Swords Dancing, Samurott. We have Sucker Punching, Swords Dancing, uh, Basharp. So two of kind of the same Pokemon, I guess. Similar, but different typings. And, you know, they have different moves, obviously, but... The same idea, um, I believe the Bisharp is actually holding a Lumberry, so that will protect it from burns and that kind of thing. We have Choice Specs, Sceptile, Rock, Polish, Life Orb, Lunatone. That's actually done quite a bit of work in uh, some Wi-Fi battles that I've been having. I think it was like number 118 where it actually put in a little bit of work, so if you haven't watched that video, go check it out. It was kind of a lot of fun, honestly. Then we have a pretty standard Hitmonlee, which is going to be a fake out, normal gem, that kind of thing. And then we also have Weezing, which is going to be our only defensive Pokemon. We really don't have anything on our team that can take special attacks, um, but at least we have something that can tank uh, physical attacks. And at the same time, it can pain split, it can do will o wisping stuff, so. Uh, we'll see how things go. I mean, on Battle Spot, physical attacks are much more common with the dragons running around, the Dragonites and the Talonflames and all that stuff. Speaking of Talonflame, here we go. Talonflame, Latios, Rotom Wash, Gengar, Mianxiao, and Landorus. So that is interesting. Now, if he wants to bring the Landorus and I have my Bisharp, that would be fantastic because I'm actually uh, running the Defiance on that. So I would actually get an increase in attack which would be pretty cool. Now, I kind of want to lead off with the Bisharp. To be perfectly honest here, I really just want to lead off with the Bisharp. Now, if that's a good idea, I don't know. I feel like the Mianchao or the Landorus would be a good lead for him. Let's see what I want to lead off with here. Uh, is the Bisharp a good idea? Is it really a good idea with the Mianchao likely coming out? Because Bish having Bisharp out on a Mianxiao is really not the best thing in the world. Really, really not the best thing in the world. So, actually, he can't do a whole lot to a Lunatone. Let's be, let's be real here. He can't do a whole lot to a Lunatone. So, let's actually start off with Lunatone. We are going to bring... We're going to bring the Bisharp. And then we're also going to bring the... Do I have anything for the Gengar? Yes, I have the Bisharp, so let's go ahead and bring the Hitmonlee, and that should be that. We really don't have much for the Latios either if Bisharp goes down, so we need to kind of preserve Bisharp, and that's the main reason why I'm not leading off with it here, because that could just be disastrous, and I really don't want that to happen. I'm not interested in disasters today. We're interested in hopefully getting at least one victory. That would just be great. So our opponent's issuing a challenge. He's going to start off with the Mian Chow. The fake out is coming, but there's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to stay in and rock polish if he wants to like U-turn and do some other kind of shenanigans that is fine by me. And if he doesn't switch into something that has priority, he's going to get smacked with something and hit kind of hard, to be honest. So let's go for the rock polish. There's the fake out. It's going to show the life orb here because everybody on Battle Spot runs the exact same sets. So it's pretty... Um, yeah, pretty predictable to know what they're going to do. If he stays in and goes for an attacking move, that could be a problem. But we're going to try it. Lunatone is, is just is kind of a gimmicky Pokemon on Battle Spot. It's really not a gimmicky Pokemon outside of that. It actually can do some decent work. But on Battle Spot, with all of these like crazy high-tier Pokemon, Lunatone doesn't usually perform too well, at least from what I've tested so far. So we'll see if we can prove uh, anybody wrong here. But we're going to go for the Rock Polish. Try to get some speed up. He's going to go for the knockoff. And that is going to finish us off. I did not uh, expect that. Did not expect that at all. There goes our life orb. He's going to take some life orb damage. But he has the regenerator. So it's really not that big of a deal. We pretty much have to go into our Hitmonlee here. And if he has the Gengar, 
that's going to be problematic. I can't go into Bisharp with this um, Yen Chao out. It's just not something that I want to do. Don't have the Focus Sash on it. So let's go ahead and go for the fake out here. If he switches into Gengar, like I said, I'm going to be in trouble. But he's going to stay in to take that. Because he probably has the Talon Flame. That would be my best guess as to why you would stay in here. So with that being said, I do not want to go for a close combat because... I'm just, I'm not sure what he's going to bring in next, and if he doesn't bring in the Talonflame, I don't really want my defenses lowered for no reason. Part of me wants to predict the Talonflame switch and go for the Stone Edge. Part of me really wants to predict that, but I don't think it'll kill. I don't, because it's going to be a resisted hit on this Mian Chao. I know it has terrible defenses, but if he attacks me, I'm just absolutely screwed. So, I'm going to go for the Earthquake. If he switches in the Talonflame, I'm going to be in trouble. He does not, though. He's just going to stay in and let this Mian Chao go down. And Earthquake is more than enough to do the job. So I guess he just felt like he didn't need that. Maybe he was looking for an opportunity to switch in the Talonflame. We will see right here. Yep, there it is. All right. I kind of want to switch in my Bisharp at this point, but there's really no reason. Uh, this is not good. Not good at all. He's going to go for the Brave Bird. Do I really want to switch my Bisharp in on that? I don't know that I want to do that because I don't know if I can take two, especially if he's Choice Bandit. My defenses aren't the greatest. Uh, do I want to sack this thing? I guess. I guess we kind of have to. All right, let's go for the Stone Edge in case he like over predicts or something. Uh, now he is going to go for the Brave Bird. He's going to take all kinds of recoil. Uh, now, the thing that, that worries me here is that I'm going to go into uh, my Bisharp, and if he goes for the Flare Blitz, I can out-prioritize him with a, um, what do you call it? A Sucker Punch. Now, if he goes for the Brave Bird, my Sucker Punch will fail, and that is, that is a big problem. But Flare Blitz undoubtedly will just one-shot. Now, we did not see a Life Orb. And we did not see leftovers either. So I'm starting to wonder if he is just Choice Bandit. So going for a Sword Stance here might be my only chance at actually winning. So I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to go for the Sword Stance. Because, I'm trying to think. If he stays in and Brave Birds, I... Will I be able to take two though? That's the thing. I guess we have to try. I don't really see any other option. I don't think that Knock Off will kill from that range. Iron Head is going to be a resisted hit, so we have to go for the Swords Dance. He's going to stay in and Will-O-Wisp, which is like the best possible thing that could have happened because I'm carrying the Lumberry, and I don't know what item this thing is carrying. So I don't, I don't know what kind of Talonflame this is either. He had the Brave Bird. I mean, all of them carry Brave Bird, but Will-O-Wisp with no lefties. Is he carrying a Rocky Helmet maybe as like a physically defensive support-ish? kind of Talonflame. Now, I can go for a Sucker Punch, but I really feel like the... something is coming that I don't want to deal with. Something is coming that I don't want to deal with. He probably has the Flare Blitz. All of them do. But he's going to go for another Will-O-Wisp here. So let's go for a knockoff. Oh, he's going to go for the Flare Blitz this time, so that is a dead but sharp. And we tried. We, we try. Oh, we live with 19 HP. Wow. Do we have a chance here? Because we are not burned. That knockoff is going to take this talent flame out. I may have spoke too soon. We're going to knock off the eject button. That is the weirdest thing. Eject button talent flame. Now that is strange. Out comes the Rotom Wash. I don't think we can kill this thing in one hit. I really, really, really do not think we can kill this thing in one hit. I don't think he's going to go for a Will-O-Wisp here unless he just is predicting the Sucker Punch. But I haven't shown that to him yet. Knockoff is actually a more powerful move, but I think he actually outspeeds because I'm not running um, max speed, I don't believe, on this Bisharp. This puts me in a little bit of a bind. If I go for Sucker Punch and he doesn't go for... This is terrible. This is terrible. Knockoff is a stronger move. But I think that I'm slow enough to where this Rotom will most likely just outspeed and destroy my life. 
Do I risk that? I'm, I've got 10 seconds. Oh, this is terrible. All right, let's go. I don't think Sucker Punch will kill, so we're going to go for the knockoff. And he's going to outspeed. He's going to go for the T-Bolt, and that is going to be the match. So, man, we almost came back from that. Bisharp living the Flare Blitz from a Talonflame with uh, some HP investment. So that's just, that is cool beans, but it's not going to be enough. Not going to be enough. The OU Horror Team wins. And that is going to be a loss for us, obviously. And that brings our record to 80 and 55. No, I do not want to save the video. I never want to save the video. You never learn. Let's continue battling and hope that uh, we can do a little bit better in this next battle. So, yeah, I want to stick with the battle box. And maybe we can get some other Pokemon into the battle. I really want to use Samurott. That is something that I really would like to do. Sceptile as well. Would love to see Sceptile do some work. If I had Sceptile as my last Pokemon there, maybe I would have done a little bit more. Although Flare Blitz and Brave Bird are both super effective, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. I guess is what I'm what I'm trying to say is that I just don't like Talonflame. I'm just tired of seeing it. It's everywhere. You cannot escape it. Alright, so this is a very cool team. Look at this team. Sand Slash. Uh, Clawitzer, Tyranitar, Ninjask, Whimsicott, and Chandelure. If I get swept by this team, I will not even be mad. I am I am serious right now. I would not even be mad even a little bit. The Ninjask I'm noticing is at level 46, but I don't know that that'll matter because he may be, just be using it for baton passing purposes. So I kind of want to lead off with the Samurott here to do some things. You know, those those kinds of things. I feel like I might be able to lead off with Lunatone, actually, and go for Rock Polish. If he if he starts off with the with the Ninjask and then you know get my speed up and then start doing things that he's not gonna like, that has potential. But I don't know that I can like really one shot anything on my opponent's side of the field because I don't really have any advantages uh, type wise. Not really, maybe just the Chandelure. So Lunatone's kind of out of the question here. Uh, he's got a couple of physical attackers that uh, could be burned with Weezing, so that has potential. But I think what I want to do, I think Samurai is the best lead. I'm going to um, bring the, let's see, I'm going to bring the Sceptile, and then I'm going to bring the Bisharp as well. So Weezing actually is not even getting into a battle. <laughs> Uh, this time around, so maybe next time, but it just it didn't didn't really fit. We pretty much have to bring the Bashar because I don't have anything for that Chandelure uh, if my Samurott goes down. So I need to try to think ahead here. So my opponent's gonna lead off with the Ninjask as expected, and he may go for Protect. He may go for a Swords Dance. He's probably carrying the Focus Sash as his item most likely, and he's gonna try to baton pass that. Uh, to a bunch of things that we don't really want to see. So we're going to go for Swords Dance this first turn. And he does go for the Protect, so that is fantastic for us. And we can... I don't know. What can, what can we do? Can we go for another Swords Dance? Dare we go for another Swords Dance? Because I have the Focus Sash. And we have the Aqua Jet, and I kind of want to get my power up. So let's just go for another Swords Dance here. Get up to plus four. He is going to go for the sword stance. This is putting us in a very good position. This is putting us in a very good position. He's definitely planning on uh, baton passing this away. Now, trying to think of what Pokemon he would want to pass that into. Definitely not the Clawitzer or the Chandelure because he went for the sword stance. So he's going to try to pass it into Sand Slash or Tyranitar, and we have type advantages on those. And I think those were his only other physical attackers other than this Ninjask. So let's go ahead and go for a Razor Shell to inflict massive damage on whatever he wants the Baton Pass out to. He may try to protect here again to get another speed boost. I don't know. Um, but at the very least, you know, worst case scenario, I guess, is that we... Well, I guess worst case scenario would be that we miss the Razor Shell. But... The next to last um, worst case scenario would be that uh, we get this thing down to its focus sash and we can finish it off with an Aqua Jet the turn after uh, if he doesn't want a baton pass. So we will we'll see what's going to happen here. Kind of interested. He is going to baton pass out here, so something's going to take a lot of damage. Uh, even if he goes into the Clawitzer, it's still going to take a lot of damage from a plus four Razor Shell. 
Uh, we'll see what it is. It's going to be the Tyranitar if this Razor Shell connects. That is going to be a dead Tyranitar, but our Focus Sash is broken. And the Razor Shell does connect. And ouch. Tyranitar does not like that so much. Samurott picking up a kill. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. We're going to get buffeted by the Sandstorm. I don't really like that too much. Because like I said, our Focus Sash is broken and that's not a good time. Not a good time. We may have to start relying on Aqua Jet now. But uh, that is actually fine by me. Fine by me indeed. He's going to go into the Ninjask again. Which is a curious play. I don't know if he's going to try to do the exact same thing. But uh, we're going to find out. We'll see if he wants to protect. We're going to go for an Aqua Jet because I don't want to risk missing. And uh, he's not actually going to protect. So that's going to take him down to almost his Focus Sash. He's going to Swords Dance here and get his attack up as well. He's going to be buffeted by the Sandstorm. And so are we. Now I kind of want to Aqua Jet again. Because... Obviously, he's going to outspeed, and I don't want to get KO'd by a plus two anything, because that's going to put me in a really bad position, because he'll be faster than pretty much everything on my team. And I don't want to be put in a position where I have to sucker punch things, because that can be worked around. So let's go ahead and go for another Aqua Jet here. And he's actually just going to forfeit the match. Okay, so that's going to be a victory for us. And uh, that was a really, really uh, short battle. So I kind of want to give you guys a bonus battle. And we haven't done that in a while, so this is kind of providing an opportunity for us. We are going to count that as a victory because, I mean, we won. I don't know what else to say. We shut down the Baton Passing Ninjask sets, I guess. Not that it's that hard to work around. Um, but that's going to bring our record up, in, up to, let's see, 81 and 55. So still the 26 game differential. We're actually going to have something different this time around. It's either going to be... Um, a 27 game differential or a 25 game differential both of which and I don't know it's been a long time since we had an odd differential as far as the numbers go I don't know our opponent is going to be from Japan and they are bringing an interesting team here Crobat, Garchomp, Rotom Wash, Porygon 2, Venusaur and Gothitelle. Now Gothitelle is an interesting Pokemon because it has that shadow tag so it prevents us from switching out hmm that is something to be wary of. That is definitely, definitely something to be wary of. Now, yet again, I'm thinking that um, the Weezing is not the best choice. That is what I'm thinking at this very moment. Now, I kind of want to bring the Lunatone again. I just, I don't know. I always want to bring Lunatone. I just, it's such a good Pokemon. It's so underrated. I know it doesn't do well on Battle Spot, but I just, I like it too much, I guess. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So we can start off, let's see, what is he likely to lead off with? Either the Rotom Wash or the Crobat, I would guess. That would be my guess. So that being said, that being said, let's lead off with the, with the Bisharp. Because if he wants to lead off with the Rotom, he cannot burn me because of my Lumberry. So that'll put me in a good position. I guess we can bring the Sceptile, because we haven't gotten Sceptile into any action yet, although two Pokemon are going to resist its moves, we're going to bring it anyway, and then as our last Pokemon, I think I would like to bring, let's see, let's bring the Hitmonlee again. So three battles today, Weezing got into zero of them, which is unfortunate, but our opponent's teams really just... We haven't really needed a, a good tank to just absorb hits. So, I mean, I guess in the first battle with that Talonflame absorbing a Brave Bird, you know, Weezing could have done that pretty easily, but it couldn't have done much else other than T-Bolt it, and we would have been Willowed, and it just would have been a whole, a whole big thing. Crobat is indeed starting things off here. Really, I'm going to hope that he's not going to go for a stupid Confuse Ray. That's what I'm just worried about more than anything. So we're going to be able to set up a Swords Dance, uh, pretty freely. He's going to U-turn out. And if he wants to go into the Rotom, then that would be fine. We're at least going to get a plus two knockoff off on it before it burns us. So that'll be that. In comes the Venusaur. Now what is this thing going to do to us? 
I have no idea. It's probably going to Mega Evolve. But what else can it do unless it carries the Earthquake? Sleep Powder. Let's go for the Iron Head, predicting the Sleep Powder. That's what I'm predicting. I don't think I will outspeed. He is going to Mega Evolve. So it's definitely not going to be the Garchomp. It's going to be Mega Evolving today. Although Mega Garchomp is actually surprisingly pretty rare on Battle Spots. He has the Hidden Power Fire. Ouch. That's going to hurt. That's not going to take us out, but it's going to do a considerable amount of damage. Iron Head is going to do quite a bit to this Venusaur. A crit! I was about to say, there's no way that an Iron Head does that much damage in just one shot to Mega Venusaur. A neutral hit? Are you kidding me? But it was a crit. So out comes the Crobat now, which is definitely going to outspeed. We're going to go for the Sucker Punch, hoping again, no Confuse Ray. Um, and nope, I don't see uh, any kind of Confuse Ray. Sucker Punch just takes out the Crobat, so... Basharp is putting in some work today, I have to say. We lost that first battle with the Basharp, but that wasn't the Basharp's so fault, that was my fault. Now, this thing's coming in, Gothitelle. I kind of want to just go for a Sucker Punch again. He could try to T-Wave me, but what else is he really going to do? I can just spam Sucker Punch until he eventually just dies to it. So, let's go for that. Uh, he's just actually just going to forfeit the match. I guess he did not have anything for his Basharp, so Basharp getting the sweep. And that's going to be uh, two out of three victories today. That brings our record to 82 and 55, a 27 game differential. I am pretty sure that that is our highest that we've ever been at. So no, I do not want to save this video. Thank you for asking as always though. Uh, so that's going to be it for this time guys. Hope that you enjoyed the bonus battle and... Uh, hopefully we can continue this momentum into the next episode. I want to thank you all for sticking around. Thank you for uh, watching. As always, don't forget to click that like button if you enjoyed the video because it does help out a lot. And I will see you all for the next episode. But until then, game on.